So this is in the past. So this is before it changed and stuff. Yeah, it looks old. I figured you'd come here sooner or later. I decided on sooner, Drew Misham, was it? I haven't done anything illegal. And I didn't come here to whine about past events. I wanted to ask you some questions. I suppose you have that right. That day, the entire court descended into chaos. Only you stood still, your eyes calmly watching. I admit it made quite an impression on me. I'm used to finding myself in outrageous situations. I once had a parrot as a witness. Phoenix Wright, was it? I'll answer what I can. I'm not sure what, but... It feels like I'm being watched. Tensely. FEMA? Yep. Oh, uh, this is my daughter. Vera, stay alone. Oh, Vera. Sorry. She's gone. Who's that lady on the picture? Shall we begin then? Sure. I guess. Judging from the place, you're a painter. Not sadly, a profitable one. I've never sold a painting. It's a source of considerable embarrassment. I would be able to get get by were it only me. Your daughter. Her mother grew wary of me and left. I don't want her to grow up needy, Mr. Wright. That is why I began my other occupation. Forgeries. Don't look at me with those eyes. I know what it is to do. More than half of the paintings they bring me are stolen. And who knows what and who knows what my copies are used for? But some of your works aren't paintings, correct? You may not believe you may not believe me when I tell you this, but that was my first work outside painting. What? Do you think it would be used as evidence in a murder trial? I never even imagined the possibility. Then why did you take the job? I was well paid, very well paid. I think he feels worse about it than I do. The past is hard to escape. Honestly, the sooner I can put this behind me. With apologies to you, of course. Sorry, but it's not going to be so quite easy. He's trying to figure out what he made. Looks like I'll have to remind him. Alright. This. Your work. Don't try to pretend you've forgotten. Sure. Well, that copy might have destroyed the life of an innocent man. I'm responsible too, which is why I have to know. And you have to tell me. I knew it would be difficult to escape this. Then let's talk. Well then, ready to tell me about this work you did. It was unlike anything I had attempted before. I guess it would be a little di I guess it would be a little different from paintings. But it's not what I meant. You know, my previous work it sufficed to create a copy. This wasn't a copy. This client gave me two things that day. The first was a sample page as a reference. The second a printed document I can only summarize was written by my client. So you used the real writing. So you used the real writing as a reference to reproduce what the client wrote. Yes, as I said, it was my first job of that nature. So, who was your client? Uh, as I said in court, I do not know. Really? Even for such a suspicious request? If it was me, I'd want to know as much as I could about the requester. I, I never met them, not personally. I... Psycholock, of course. Seems like you're still hiding something. Something about this work. Uh, uh... Okay, let's do it. You're hiding something. Is this going to be all about how Vera is actually the real forger and stuff? And she's probably met the guy, but he's just hiding the fact that she's the forger, but he's not knowing everything, and so he can't actually prove. Because the thing is, if you're going to hide something, if you're going to pretend to be someone you're not, you need to know a lot about what they know. And he doesn't know stuff that she knows, making it hard to believe he's the forger. 
Let's hear it then. What are you hiding from me, Mr. Michonne? I'm sorry, but I really don't know. I never met the client. True, when I asked the client's name, there were no psyche locks inside. Regardless, you're hiding something. You have to be, otherwise it wouldn't make any sense. Er, uh, why are you doing this to me? Well, it made my stand. No begging down, no? So what's Misham hiding? The forger. I can pretty much piece together what it is from what you've said. Well, what is it, then? You told me what you know, knew about the client. And I couldn't see any psyche locks. Psycho locks? Is that some sort of asylum security or a new hairstyle? But then they did show up, didn't they? Who is your client? As I said in court, I do not know. Really? Even for such a suspicious request? If it was me, I'd want to know as much as I could about the requester. I never met them. Not personally, I... Not personally. Those words trigger the psyche lock. Again with the psycho locks. Now I really must know what they are. So you didn't meet with the client. But something someone else did. Maybe the real forger behind this evidence. Hmm, perhaps, perhaps I'd hung up on this lock business. I'm afraid you've lost me. Yeah, well, I didn't come here to talk about psycho locks. As long as I come to the right conclusion, it doesn't matter how I got there. And your conclusion is? The real forger behind this wasn't you, Mr. Misham. Oh, poppycock! <laughs> what? I don't know about what you're talking about. That's why. That's my work, I tell you. I made him here in my studio. What else? Well, who else could it have been but me? That's the real question, isn't it? The real forger wasn't you. And I don't have any people to choose from. The real forger at your studios is... It's Vera, right? Yeah. The real forger is your daughter, Vera Michan, isn't it? Ridiculous, my daughter's only 12 years old. Mr. Wright. I've always been more one for landscapes, not serialism. That's come back, but you're shaking in your boots. I've got you now. The only two people with access to this studio are you and your daughter. The psyche locks tell me you're not a forger, which makes your daughter with the only possibility. Um, I feel very much on the verge of going to psycho lock myself. <laughs> Boom. Uh. Alright, Magda Fee's diary. I don't know how you knew, but you're right. The one who made this page was my daughter Vera, not I. She's only 12, a genius, you might call her. A precaut precocious little girl outshining her father. There's been a lot of that going around lately. <laughs> yeah, with Trucy. I let her play in the studio and she watches me. She taught herself in that way. The drafting tools and analytic analytical devices I brought when they became necessary. They're my little girl's playthings now. Ah, do I have to check a little of fatherly pride? So Vera was the one who made this page. Would she know who the client was then? Actually, the client came once. Here to the studio. What? Why didn't she say so sooner? But their face was covered and they did not want to talk to me. So they talked to your daughter. I will speak only with the artist, the client told me. That little girl might know something about him. Okay, what do I do now? Maybe I should talk to her father a little bit. Or is it time to turn my attention to Vera? Talk to Vera. Miss Misham, I have a request. Let me guess, you'd like to speak with my daughter. Can I? My daughter has never been one to talk to strangers. She's quite shy, extremely so, actually. With only one exception. Which was? Oddly enough, it was that client. I left the studio while they talked. I returned when they had finished and she was laughing. It was the first time I'd seen anything of the sort. Please, let me speak with her. Alright. Hey, Vera. Uh-oh. This could be tough. Alright. Um. Actually, I want to examine things first. Let's see this small desk. Because this is what was important last time. Maybe I'll just sit on over here for a closer look. The red envelope's there. The frame is there. That's an awfully small frame. What's the inside of it? A stamp? Oh, please don't touch that. I'll get in trouble. That stamp belongs to Vera, you see. She always puts it somewhere she can see it. That's Zack and Valant. The Grammarese, isn't it? The post office issued the commemorative stamp last year. 
When the Grammarize are at the height of their thingy. Not anymore. Now that one of them has vanished off the face of the earth. Vera went Vera went to see one of their shows when she was quite small. She's been a dedicated fan ever since. She watched them every time they came on TV until the end. I see. That stamp's quite hard to come by out here. I still wonder how she got her hands on it. Interesting. Okay. Um, I guess that's really all. Oh yeah, I can actually use that because it might get her talking. Maybe? And then there's this. My stamp. Hey, she spoke. She can talk. Yeah, so this stamp, how can I keep her talking? Um, great magicians, aren't they? Isn't Troop Grimmarai amazing? Ah. Uh. Hmm, yes. Oh. I especially like those two, Zack and Valant. I mean, they're uh, just so magical. Aren't they? Aren't they? Oh my god, Fango! Yeah, whenever I go to one of their shows, I'm like, whoa, magic, you know? Me too, me too, I love them, they're so cool. Oh my god, she's so adorable. It's like, they like magic, yeah. Alright, she's talking, not saying much, but it's a start. I went and saw them with Father the other day. The opening ceremony at the Grammarai Museum, Museum of Magic. The Grammarai Museum? They have one of those? I guess it makes sense now that they have their own commemorative stamp. <laughs> so, have you been to one of the shows? Just once, when I was little, with Father. The grammar eyes on stage, it was like a dream. Disappearing, dis reappearing, cutting apart, putting it back together. Yeah, yeah, maybe you can tell, keep telling me stuff like this. You know, about Zack and Vellum, maybe. Oh, oh, sure. Alright, better get asking before she changes her mind. Oh, yeah. Okay, let's talk. Vera. I don't, I don't go outside much. I like to paint in here. Why don't you like the outside? There's bad people out there. Well, true, but there's lots of good people, too. Actually, I should tell you. She was almost kidnapped once. What? Really? Since then, she's been, well, you can see for yourself. She refuses to leave the house. I see. Wait, but that doesn't make sense. She said she went to the Grammar Museum. With you, in fact. Oh, yes, actually. She was quite insistent on it, much to my surprise. That was the first and last time she expressed such a desire to me. <coughs> Sorry. The person gave me a good luck charm. A good luck charm? For when I absolutely had to go outside. Yes, apparently she received something. From that client, actually. She won't tell me what it is. Father, I told you to keep that a secret. From that client, huh? This has to, uh, This I have to hear about. So your father tells me you're good at painting at all. Still sorts of things. I really like painting a lot. Father is always very happy when I paint them exactly the same. So you did this too? Oh yes, that was my first job. Your first? All I used to do was paint the same thing I saw. But this was totally different. The pen slips in the way the writer held the pen and the pressure on the nib. I had to use a microscope and analyze it on the computer. She seems happy, oh, the, so the computer tech is for her. Odd, her work was the last nail in the Grammarai coffin. I guess no one told her. They're the best in the world. Huh? Oh, you mean Troop Grammarai, of course. Father gave it to me. Your father? But I asked him about it. He didn't know how you got it. Oh? Oh, um, I guess I just took it, yeah. Took it? Father got a letter from that person. A person? You mean the letter was from the client? Oh, we talked about the grammar eyes forever that day. I'm sure that's why I was sent that stamp. It didn't just... It didn't... I didn't want to just send that back. They're a sneaky one. So they were trying to get on a good side. The client. So you met the person that asked you to do this job. And you talked with them. What's this about a good luck charm you received? What's this about a good luck charm you received? I can't talk about it. Is it that yellow thing in your... in your arms? If I do, it won't work anymore, that's what I was told. Yeah, but I really, really have to know. Oh boy. I have a feeling Valent Grammaria was the masked person, because she has a yellow book. 
And he's the only person we know of who has a good luck charm. Okay. Hmm. Hopefully we can do it. Oh no! What if it's the nail polish? What if she got a nail polish from Kristoff and that's her good luck charm? Because they have similar nail polish things. You seem to trust this client quite a lot, in fact. Because they gave you this stamp. No, that's not why. They listen to me. To my problem. The problem that keeps her inside all the time. Don't go outside if you don't want to. That's what they told me. But when I absolutely have to go out, all I had to do was use a good luck charm. Good luck charm that your client gave you. I think I know what your client might have forgiven you. Is this your good luck charm? This was what they gave you, wasn't it? The same bottles over there on your desk. Your good luck charm, right? I heard once, cosmetics were once thought to ward off evil. This is a magic bottle. It has the power. I have the power. Oh, of course it does. I'll just refrain from commenting any more on that one. I think I know who gave you that bottle. The one who asked you to do this job. Was this the client, Kristoff, right? Bloody Kristoff. <laughs> Seriously, Kristoff is just annoying. This man is your friend, a friend of mine. Know him? His name is Kristoff Gavin. He's a lawyer, actually. I, I promised. I promised not to tell. I'm sorry, I can't talk about the client, I promised. And if I break my promise, the spell won't work. I don't need a name anymore, I've got my answer. You're pretty confident in this charm, then. I think they might be the devil. Huh? Or maybe an angel. Uh, what do you mean? I saw it, or I think I saw it. When they gave me this, I saw the devil's face. You're saying the client's face looked like the devil's? No, the client was gentle, with a gentle smile. So where'd you see this devil, then? It was so quick, I don't remember well. But that's when I knew that person wasn't like other people. That's why I believe my good luck charm. I'm not sure what this devil she saw was. But it's pretty clear that Christoph Gavin gave her ch has her charmed. Could it be that Clavia was the guy who was masked and gave her this, but Christoph was there, hiding? And she saw his face for a split second. I'm sorry for what happened. If you want to apologize, try my client, Zach Ramurai. Um, did I do something bad? What makes you think that? Your eyes, they're sad, very sad. Oh, I'll put on my smile next time I come, promise. I hope to see you smile then too, Vera. Oh, okay. Take care. Thinking back on my first encounter with the young forger, I witnessed something of very vital importance that day. Of course, by the time I realized it, it was already too late. Yeah. So that's done. And let's go back to the detention center. I want to see if I can finally do this. Trick up his sleeve. Flying by the seat of my pants on this one. Yeah, 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 yeah. And flush yourself to means danger. Let us make this as painless as possible. Be a proof of this danger. Hmm. I was thinking this over time. But I have a feeling it has to do with this. Fires one real bullet. Rifle marks match bullets found in victim. No fingerprints found. I just, I was thinking back on the trick they do, and the trick they do is they shoot at the girl, but everything else around them is shot. So I have, I have a feeling, what if they accidentally killed her? Um, I don't know how, I don't know if it's like maybe during practice or something they accidentally shot her. But I have a feeling this is it. Oh, it is. 
Why, that's one of ours. Specially designed for your show, I gather. Single bullet, one shot. What are you suggesting? We are magicians, Mr. Reich, not murderers. I'm not crying murder, Mr. Valent. I'm crying something far more tragic. An accident. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Zack and Valent, quick draw, shoot him! How long has it been since those shots were last heard? Was the shooting cancelled because someone might get hurt? Of course, what other reason could there be? Well, it could be cancelled because someone has already been hurt. Fascinating, my Frostane fortune friend. But tell me, what can you prove with a single pistol? Well, tell me, what would have happened if there had been an accident? What if one of the bullets took a life of a sta on a stage? The performance of magic is not concerned with what ifs. It is concerned with la 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 la. Skip to Josh. I'm sorry. Precisely. Whom do you claim was shot? Looks like I've chosen the right path. Let's just hope he walks with me. A life of sacrifice. The show must be gone. The show. Oh. I can't click the girl. Oh, I can click the locket though. I'm guessing that's it. But, but that's... Zach Grammarai's wife and Trucy's mother. Thalaza, I believe, was her name. Oh, is this like a, a triangle thing? How he loves her, but she's with someone else. But how can you say this? How can you say she was struck by one of our bullets? Still in denial mode, eh? Thalaza was at the greatest risk of being shot. And this clearly shows just how much danger she's in. I guess in the stamp, right? Because it shows that she's part of their team. Troop Grammarai's performance was very, very popular. So popular, they even made a commemorative stamp at the height of your fame. We were not merely the latest craze, we were an age, a golden age. Thus my clothes! Yellow! It's all here on the stamp. That's Talaza, yes? Ugh! Trucy's mother's missing, I hear. What happened to her? I don't know! Part of his memory is still locked up. There is one thing you're failing to address. What's that? As you say, our troupe was a word unto itself. If our leader, McTafee, was so inclined, he could hide anything he wished with ease. But, Mr. Wright, then he would have to hide a crime, making him an accomplice. Not a great foundation for blackmail. But he was already on his deathbed. I'm guessing... Oh. Maybe he wanted to die quickly to be with, um... Because were they talking about how Thalaza might be McAfee's daughter? I don't think Zack and Valent are actually his sons, obviously. I think they're like disciples. But the girl was most likely his real daughter. And he most likely wanted to die to be with her. And so I'm guessing the blackmail was, Oh, come here, kill me, or else I'm gonna let everyone know you killed her. I'm guessing that's what the blackmail was. Velen's got a good point. If one of the Troop A members died in an accident and McAfee covered it up, his innocence would come into a question. Found the right address, Mr. Wright! So close, there has to be something. About how Thalaz's death could ref affect Zack and Valen's relationship with McAfee. I see in your eyes, you still have something to say! How can you possibly prove more than you already have? I'll prove why Thalaz's accident tied your hands so completely. With a person. It's going to take a little knowledge of the pl players to crack this one. The access to death of Zack's wife tried both your hands. And this information proves why McAfee held so much power onto you. Because she's his bloody daughter! It wasn't a question of who shot the Laza. The Laza herself was the problem. What do you mean? She was Zack Grammarai's wife. Trucy's mother. And Magnify Gr McAfee Grammarai's only daughter. There was a terrible accident. And the two of you killed your mentor's only daughter. If that wasn't the key to Magnify's, Magnify's power over you, I don't know what was. It, it was! It was an accident! Bunnies! And Regal are doves! Blackmail. There's no proof! None at all! But the laws went missing. Did your mentor blackmail both of his disciples? It doesn't take a genius to put one and one together. Owls was a complex family. You mean Troop Grammarai? The master Magnafee Grammarai, his only daughter, and his two disciples. It does sound like a recipe of disaster, doesn't it? 
Do not be tempted into the faulty flights of fancy. Yes, there was an accident. But that is all it was, an accident. Zack and Valens tour de force. The guns blaze, the bullets fly straight for that beautiful body on stage. And then crash zing pow onto everything but her. Now that is magic. It happened one day when we were practicing. Same trick with a new twist. And tragedy. Damn. So that's what that picture was about. But as for whose bullet stole Thalaz's life, we shall never know the answer. The Lars had disappeared from our lives, and Zack was bereft of his wife. Trucy lost her mother, and Magnafi, his daughter. Damn. Like... Magic is... Like, magic tricks are really dangerous. I'm not really sure if in the world there is actually such thing as real magic outside of tricks, but tricks themselves are so dangerous, it's not funny. One step up, and you could... I don't know, be put into a coma or something worse. Ugh, scary. And that led to blackmail, I take it. It is all part and parcel of the darkness that comes when the curtain falls. The darkness. Why did Magnafi Gramorai try to cover up the accident? It was his own daughter who died. All I can say is it was a critical time for Troop Gramorai. A passing of the torch from Magnafi to Zack and Valent. We all sacrificed so that it might be a success. Thalaz's death was the greatest sacrifice of all, yet, even when her life was extinguished, her presence was not. Something tells me Magnafi knew who killed her. Like, maybe he got the rifling marks of the gun of the bullet that was in her. And maybe he... maybe it's Valent that did it? And so that was why he was calmly talking to Zack, because A, Zack was technically his new son, because he'd married uh, to Thalaza. Uh, I'm skipping these accents because my finger keeps on pressing the mouse. But, maybe he just has a very big hatred for Valant, because of that. Like, he knows it's an accident, but come on, if your own daughter had died and it's because of someone you took in as your disciple, it would be very hard not to be angry. Magnafi forces to perform his art for his benefit. I see, I guess I can understand. I mean, he did lose his only daughter, but do you not find cowardice in his actions. Huh? To decide the truth of your own daughter's death is one thing. But then to hang that death as a guillotine above our heads. Things were dark behind the scenes in Troop Gamerai, that's for sure. Does Trucy know? She was not told, naturally. Who would want to know their father might have taken their mother's life? True. I had not thought of that accident for a very long time. I'm sorry to dredge up old memories, but this has helped me a lot. Not to find Magnafi's slayer, I should think. True. Oh. After that accident. There was one who came sniffing quite persistently. A reporter. He called himself a newsman at the time. Uh, it's the same guy, Brush, alright. Often I spied him lurking about the dressing room during his research. Did you happen to remember his name? What was his name? Sorry, I've forgotten. But in the course of his interview, he became quite close to my partner, Zack. I liked him not. I see. His name I do not recall, but he sent the cloying aroma of mint. Yes, whenever he smiled, which was far too often. I see, thanks for your help. It does no good to interfere with the past, Mr. Wright. You will not uncover answers, only wounds. I'm sorry. I had begun to notice a dark curtain hanging over Troop Gramorai, and I began to re realize what I had to do. I had to protect Trucy from the darkness, the reporter he mentioned, the newsman I never learned who that was at the time. Though I've gotten a pretty good idea who it is now. That smile and the sickly sweet smell of mint. The last floss thin thread connecting Zack Gramorai to this world. Sooner or later I'd have to track him down. Guess we're going back to the present now because we've done all of the past. Yep. True Studio. Sunshine Coliseum. So, I guess... Can we go back here? Uh, I guess we can, but there's no real point to it. Okay. Present day, Drew Studio.
There he is. Eh, well, 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 what do we have here? Remember me? Of course I remember you, journalist, meat sex, attorney, and bar, end quote. Can I ask what you're doing here? Mr. Michelle was poisoned his daughters. Oh yes, I know. How I know, yes. It's caused me no end of grief, to be honest. Journalist wishes he'd track down Case just a little quicker, end quote. Were you on the trail of the case the whole time? Zach Grammarai was a good friend. Zach said, Zach said something to the effect back at the Borscht Bowl Club. What a character, what a man. If a little, no, a lot. No, extremely rough around the edges. Do you think I could ask you a few questions? Oh, are you serious? I mean, I'm usually the interviewer, not the interviewee. Journalists ask questions, none other way around, end quote. Fine, shoot, I don't care. People have been asking me all sorts of things lately. Sure thing. Actually, um, I want to see if you know about this person. Mr. Broshill, do you know this person? Do I know that person? Of course. I was friends with Zach after all. He hit me a few times. Five times, actually. But still, I'd never forgot his life. wife. Thalaza... Thalaza Grammarai. Magnifique Grammarai's only daughter. Do you think you could tell me more about her? Well, why the heck not? I'm the Dick Gumshoe of this game, even though Dick Gumshoe was here for like one time. <laughs> yeah. Who would have disappointed it was only once? It was... It was tragic what happened to Mr. Drew Misham and his daughter. Forgery is a serious crime and they paid the price. You know what really did them in though, don't you? Yes, a forged diary page. The night I interviewed him, I found out something about Miss Misham I hadn't known. What's that? You know, he always felt like he was being watched. Every day for seven years, walls have I ears, potatoes have eyes, end quote. Being watched? You mean he felt guilty? No, I'm not talking about feelings here. You know, I felt watched too, the whole time I've been on this case, no less. Journalist gets tingling sensation on the back of the neck, freaks out, end quote. <laughs> because you feel guilty? Why would I feel guilty? You felt like you were being watched, huh? I wonder what it all means. Oh, paranoia. I'm not used to uh, adding. Oh, I didn't even read that. Um, I think I'm not used to changing right after I finish it. And you were you along with them. You sure it wasn't just nerves? Nerves? No, it's nothing so mundane. I stopped paying attention to my nerves a long time ago. But I felt too. Journalist Shorey, sure he is being watched. End quote. What is it by Clavier and stuff? Don't don't you, don't you wonder why Zach Graham or I got rubbed out after seven years, right after coming into contact with me? He completely vanishes from the courtroom. And for seven years, he talks to no one, not us all. Then, just as the remaining time was almost up, he contacts me in order to have this made. And then he dies. Starting to put the pieces together, are we? And you're being watched this whole time. Maybe not just me, maybe you are too. Me? Hmm. I met Zack through that case, actually. You mean the shooting of Magnifique Ramirai? No, before that, it's not widely known. You mean, the accident, during the quick draw shoot in practice. My, 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 you're well informed. You should have seen me back then, and I dug up this quite scoop. Or oh, maybe, um, maybe the, I don't know which case it is, the accident or the death of Magnafee. Maybe the reporter was investigating one of them, and Kristoff or stuff didn't want him finding out anything. And so they kept an eye on him, and they also kept an eye on Phoenix. Maybe that's why Kristoff became friends with Phoenix, because he wanted to keep an eye on him because he knew he was pretty dangerous. I wanted it all, money, fame, women, a little puppy owl for me. And maybe that's... Maybe... No, I think it was just luck. I was going to say, what if Phoenix found out that Kristoff was trying to watch him and that's why um, he was happy to get him in prison, but I think that was just luck. I think he didn't actually know Kristoff did the murder, but he just... That's when he started thinking Kristoff was a bad guy but he didn't actually know he was being watched by him. I'm thinking? Because it, it makes me think that Phoenix is actually pretty smart, but now I'm just thinking it's just luck. Like, this is um in the present day. This is after Kristoff went into prison, this scene right here. And only now is he realizing he was being watched. So I'm like, yeah, he's just a lucky guy. <laughs> I was younger then, and my days and nights smelled a fresher mint than they do now. Felon Kramari didn't mention one particularly nosy smile. In fact, I was on close speaking terms with Magnifique Ramirai at the time. I knew his daughter too, of course. Thalaza, wasn't it? Really? Then Thalaza disappeared quite suddenly at that. That Magnifique wouldn't say a word about it. Yeah, my evil habit got the better of me. Journalist catches scent of a scoop, goes on feeding frenzy, end quote. 
I set up on a one-on-one -on -one interview with Eliza's husband, see? Zachary Mariah. Something strange was in the air over at the troop grammar in those days. The whole skew screwy mentor controlling disciples seemed started by that, I'm guessing. Talaza, she was part of it all. Right. Come on, you can tell me off the record. Sorry, I don't know. Anyway, I kept praying and eventually became friends with Zack. Sure, he punched me once or twice or five times. But over time, he came to see me as his confidant. Valen Grimora. He'd been waiting this whole time, seven years, eh? Waiting. For he's come back, of course. A big revival of the Magnifique Miracle. Of course, it was all a dream. Because of this. The performance rights. In the absence of any official documents, he was golden. Who's used to say the old man didn't give his rights to both Zack and Valent. So Valent waited until Zack died, legally at least. The time finally comes and Valent's like a kid on Christmas morning. He's getting ready for his show at the Sunshine Coliseum, you know. That document sees a legal light of day. It's going to be a bit of a damper on his big show. He's a sorry one, that Valent Grammarai. Lost out of his partner at work and he loved to. Love. It's the same old story, really. Two disciples and their mentor's only daughter. What's his three sides and all of them point to your love triangle? Hmm, that is pretty classic. When you're in a performing troupe, that's your world. It's like family. One with an entire high school's worth of drama, intrigue, and backstabbing. And in the middle of all this, the Lazar is Trucy. And then she dies. I need to find out more about this Lazar. The Lazar. So Thalaza, so Thalaza married Zack and had Trucy, yes? It was, her, it was her second marriage, actually. You mean she was divorced? I hadn't heard this one before. Not quite. Her late husband was a performer, too. He died in an accident on stage. Tragic, really. They had only been married one year. I didn't know. Ah, but she was a beauty. You still carry a portrait photo of her around, you know? Oh, nice. She reminds me of the siren a little. I've known Trucy since she was a little thing, too. Did you get- Oh no, is that gonna be a thing? Please don't. <laughs> oh, please don't. Please don't. Please don't. Please don't. I'm very sick of these mind fucks. <laughs> I can't handle these mind fucks anymore. Please don't be the siren. It's just- It sort of looks like a- I don't know if- I don't know if Alamois had the ponytails, but- I can just imagine Thalaza with a mask over her face, and I can just see it slightly. I'm hoping it isn't. Oh my god, that would be weird. She got the better deal, right? She's got you for, fam for family, after all. What do you mean? Just reminiscing, you know. Thalaza has another child besides Trucy. End quote. Oh. What? But Trucy said she was an only child. Ah, yes, this one she had with her previous husband. Is it Lamois? Her previous husband. Her first husband who died on stage. Yep, they had themselves a kid. Another orphan, now. There's another one who slipped through the cracks. No idea where they are now. Thalaza had another child. Do you think I could borrow that photo? Sure, I can be generous on an occasion, you know. Okay. I won't need this locket anymore. Better return it to Trucy before I forget. People and, f people and events all get tangled bit together and get bigger and bigger. Don't you think? I was too busy wondering about Big Road to listen to what you were saying. Sometimes you just gotta accept that you won't be able to untangle it all, I think. You need to serve it still. I have to do what I can, and I have to tell what I find to those who come next. Next, you say? I'm not the one who will close the curtain on this little play. Apparently, that's not my role anymore. Magnafee! I was just wondering what Magnafee would think of all this. What do you mean? Haven't you seen it all in Trucy? He's got his power. You mean how I can't lie to Trucy? It was the same with McNafee. And with his daughter. The Laza. It's a strange... It's a strange thing. It's a strange thing. You think it's some Grammarai gene? McNafee told me once, back when Zack married the Laza. He said Zack had good eyes. But not good like Grammarai's eyes. Not that good. I wonder if Zack ever played a game of poker with his wife. Who knows what this grammar, what the Grammarai's secret was. Maybe nobody now that Zack's gone. Sacramorai. The plot had finally begun to reveal itself. It sprouted from a warp in the Grammarai fabric and grew, swallowing everything. Wrapping itself around the Grammarai's power. P 
power which passed from, mag from Magnify Gramorite to Thalaza to the next generation. And I would once again need to meet the one who bridged it all together. Oh, am I going to go back to the Borscht Ball Club? Like, we're going to see what happened during the game. Okay, cool. We're not done with Sol Solitary Cell 13, by the way. I just realized that. Okay, so what am I doing here? Oh, maybe I can do this now. Grammarai Secrets. I have to know more about this power of Trucy's. It's like she can see right into people's minds. The first time I saw her do it, it blew my mind. It blew mine. And after you were done having a mind blown, you took her pl to play guards with you. Uh, gotta use the resources at hand, I always say. Yet I myself have no such power. But Trucy does. Why is that? Maybe Trucy got her power from her mother. The laws of Grammarai. Oh, we'll not speak of that. Well, as there's a fish rat, and I think I know why you don't want to talk about it. Uh, yeah. Jeez, my emulator's going weird. The three of you were a team once. Country, not that the entire country doesn't already know this. It's around. Another story behind the fame. One that not many know. So Laza lost her life during a rehearsal, when Valent Grammarai's bullets. It was an accident! It, it wasn't me! I'm not gonna shoot my teeth, Laza. Sure, Valent would say the same thing. Why, it's just like another murder I might mention. Damn you! Her eyes, I love Thalaza's eyes. To think they could read my mind was frightening. Yet there was a warmth in them that I felt like an embrace. She's dead, and Magnify, Gram Magnify Grammarai has joined her. So the auntie. Mrs. Zack. I do not know. I don't need any more power any power to see through that one, buddy. So there's someone else. Someone other than Trucy. Someone who inherited Thalaz's power. Uh, how would I know? My chances are slim. Oh. It would take a miracle to learn the truth. Or maybe one has already occurred. There's someone else with the power and I know who. Get yeah, it. Bracelet, isn't it? How the hell did he get it? I've always wondered that, like, why does he have more power than Trucy when it's meant to be, like, a grammar I think? This boy. His name is... Uh, I forget. Something weird. Who could he be? Uh, Tony. I noticed him when I went to visit a friend's lawyer's law office. So, what are we to make of this, old great ex attorney? You can show me pictures of strange boys all you like. But you could at least say something like, I'm this boy, I can use a laugh. Perhaps you wouldn't laugh if you knew the facts. This might not be 100% proof, but it's close. There's a link between this boy and Thalaza. Actually, it's more of a ring. A ring? Perhaps this will refresh your memory. I just so happen to have evidence showing this middle. Hang on. Let me have a look at this. <gasps> she has the bracelets! Actually, I knew something. Your marriage to Thalaza was her second. How did you know? No, 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 fuck, no, fuck, no, 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 we're not doing this. We're doing this. Game, I told you to solve with the mind fucks. A poor half brother? What? Is that what we're saying? Is that what we're saying? No. 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 Oh. Fuck you. <sighs> okay. I'm fine. How did you know this? Uh, I don't remember. Her first husband, he died a year after they were wed, yes. He was a performer they met when he joined us, Grand Marie's, as a guest in our show. After the laws wed him, she left the truth for a while. And you say she has a child. She had a child then. I have a photograph of her here. Oh no, god damn it. I couldn't help notice when she was wearing what she was wearing when I first saw this. This bracelet stand out. 
The Grammarai family heirloom. The boy. Wears a bracelet just like the ones in the picture. What? So, that's why. Why what, Mr. Zack? I took this photograph of Thalaza before she left us. When she returned, she wore only one bracelet. I better know where that other one went. She gave it to this boy. Her son- No! Are you serious? Why? I- I'm- I'm fine with this. Okay, I like mine Fox. But goddamn, that came out of nowhere. That was so good though. I'm sorry, but I- I- I may be complaining about this, but that's only because it's so surprising. After all, it all adds up. Like, it's understandable. In the end, we don't know much about Apollo's past. So it's not like this just came out of nowhere, it's just that I didn't expect it. Holy shit! <laughs> oh. By the way, I just... No, maybe that's just my mind. Oh, sorry, I'm just trying to look in the, ba in the background. For some reason, right now, I'm trying to think of anything the, in, like the pictures in the background mean anything. And that picture back in the, in the far left, on the top, next to the wine bottle, it's like a picture of some kind of thing with a handle. I thought that was an, the urn from Kurain Village for a second there. I don't know why. Oh, god damn it. <sighs> the strange power of myself do not know where it came from. Yet the fact that is the f yet the fact is that it p is passed down the Grammarai line. It runs in the veins. What is that? What is it? I asked her, Thalaza once. This is what she told me. Her power responds to tension in others. Tension? If she were to face a person and they became tense even slightly, then she would know, no matter how hard they tried to hide it from her. So she could see it. Not quite, this is the strangest part of it all. She wouldn't realize that she was subconsciously detecting the tension. Without the use of a particular object, or in her case, objects. Objects? Wait. Are they something she wore? Yes, the bracelets. I admit the first time I saw one of those, I felt like there was more to it than just fashion. What kind of power could a bracelet have? Maybe it's like a magnifier? Which would be like a pun to the name Magnifi. But maybe she's able to sense tension, but without the bracelet she can't tell? I will tell you all I know. Consider it a gift. Cool, thank you. Well, I hardly need you to tell me at this point, but those two. A brother and sister, yes. And the brother, too, has this power of theirs. So Trucy has an older brother. I wonder what will come of that. Phoenix has known this since the start of the game. Wow. Mr. Wright, tonight after our game is done, I will return to a life of hiding. I will not see her live for her life, for her life without knowing. I understand. I'll tell the two of them where they met is right. And their time is right. I am in your debt once again. No kidding. What I want to know is how all this got to be so messed up. Okay, bracelets. Those bracelets are made of special alloy. It is said to expand and shrink very slightly in response to body warmth. So they're temperature sensitive or something. Yes. This is how they can shrink to the exact of their wearer's side, wrist. And this has something to do with their power. What have I told you? What have I told you? The Grammarai power reacts to tension in others. When a Grammarai senses tension, they too become blah, 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 blah. And the tension translates into m minute contractions of the muscles. So mi min minute. I feel like that's not meant to say minute, like... Minute? Like minimum? Minute? Min so minute, they cannot sense it on their own. Their muscles? Oh, so that's what the bracelets are for. With a bracelet on, one can sense these contradictions, because the bracelet is always a perfect fit. So this is like, their power allow them to sense what the other person's feeling? Like, for example, everyone we've met that's always lying, we had to see how they move. So, I've always thought, are we just looking very closely? But, is it like, we're actually feeling their tension? Like, if someone's tension, um, tension is like, they move their fingers slightly, do we feel our fingers slightly moving? And that guy, the reporter that sweats when he, um, were we sweating slightly? Is that what it does? Or are we literally just looking very closely? I, I'm not really understanding that. 
I'd like it better if it was like, oh, you're actually feeling what they're feeling, because that'd be awesome. Like, it'd be pretty cool that it does that. But, who knows. I just feel like that'd be a pretty cool power. It's like, oh, you're tense. I'm gonna be able to work out how tense you are, because I'll feel it as well. We're connected, because my power. Because the bracelet is always a perfect fit. So when the person that I'm watching gets tense, the bracelet feels tighter on their wrist. Precisely. But that alone doesn't really count as mind reading. I believe I understand how the process works from there. It's a simple question of eyesight. Eyesight? I guess that sounds simple enough. Have you ever heard of kinetic vision? Something about the ability to see moving objects with full clarity, right? Oh, so like having a hunt, like, perfect eyesight. I've heard it before. They say athletes can see a moving ball like it was stopped if they focus. Oh, but it's not confined to sports alone. It all relies on the ability to focus. When we focus, we can see many things. The faintest twitch of their face and the meaning that lies behind it. Oh, okay, so we are looking. Okay. One must know the mind of a crowd, one before one may distract it. So basically what you're saying is, the grammar eyes can see really well. For them, seeing is more than believing, it is knowing. Their power relies on the eyesight combined with exceptional focus. I'm into focus for me now. Of course, it is difficult to maintain such levels of focus for any length of time. But when if someone could tell you when to focus? Or something? Precisely. So many brains. You were talking about poker, yes? The timing of when to focus is so elementary does without thinking. I doubt Trucy herself has realized this. That is all I I know of the things grammar I. Thank you, Mr. Zack. If this boy's bracelet is the real thing, then he will use it before long, thereby awakening his power. I'll keep that in mind. Well, shall we play? Oh, I've said so much. Let me say one more thing. I'll tell you of that night. That night? The night of my mentor Magnifique Grammar I passed from this world to the next. Oh. There were two pistols and two letters set. This was Magnifique's test. Test? In these last years, Magnifique Grammar I walked us to the bow, no to the pain. But that night, I could not shoot him. So I shot the clown's forehead instead. This, it seems, was the correct answer. Take this, I give my art to you, Zack. What? It's thanks for playing along with my show. You shot well tonight, Zack. Though I would not have minded dying by your hand. How can I shoot you? You're my mentor. Bah, I thought you might say that. If I went home without shooting anything, what would you have done then? And of course, I would have given Valant his chance. And if I had shot you in the f and if I shot you in the forehead instead, then it would have been. If your Valant were to shoot me in the head, then I too, the darkness, would go of my heart with me. A fit again, don't you think? Ah, oh. yet this end too gives me no cause for regret. I thank you, Zack, and I am sorry. I have done much that was wrong in my day. Seems to me the Magnifique wanted you to be a successor all along. That's why the time he gave you was earlier than Valance. Perhaps, but it is not something you will ever, will ever know. I wonder, what is Valance up to these days? You to die. If seven years pass like this, the performance rights go to him. Oh. And now here I am, and his dream has ended. Hello. Public opinion's a fickle thing, you know. What? You don't mean to tell me to put the blame for our mentor's death on him? Trump. There are even rumors that Valance helps you pull it off. But it's madness. They don't suspect Valant. Wow. He actually thinks his brother is... Wow, he doesn't even... I'm guessing Valant is his brother. They might not be. But he doesn't suspect Valant. It feels like. That's actually pretty funny. I'm surprised. It seems that before I can once again disappear from this world, I have one more act to perform. Isn't it odd that sorting out my life should prove so complicated? Even though I'm dead. That night, Zach Grammarai was killed. He died as Shady Smith, a mysterious traveler with a secret past. But this. Who would make concern? Soon he's paused. I, Zach Grammarai, murdered my mentor, Magnifique Grammarai. 
What? Trouble. And yada yada yada. Of course he'd killed no one. This is his way of tying up loose ends with his old partner, Valengram Arani. Zach's confession. Jeez. Okay. I'm starting to wonder. Um. Did he have Kristoff kill him? Like, on purpose. He asked Kristoff to do this. Maybe. I don't know why, though. I just can't figure why Kristoff would know it's him. God damn. Uh, I'm gonna go to the Sunshine Coliseum. I have a feeling the Solitary Cell 13 would be lost. Present day, Sunshine Coliseum. It's me! Well, this is a blast from the distant past! Long time no see, Mr. Valent. Seven years has it been. Frankly, I didn't think I'd ever see you again. Actually, I came because there's something I want to ask you. I've spoken to the press, so I have nothing more to say! I've spoken to a lot of people myself and come to some conclusions. But then I realized... I needed to hear from you. Let's talk about Magnifique Grammarai. I have walked a difficult road these past seven years. Because you couldn't perform Magnifique's Rapture. Do not be deceived! Valent's skill is the real deal. I do not require my mentor's hand-me-downs. No, it was my partner who slowed me on my way. Zach Grammarai. He's rather well performed, disappearing act seven years ago at the end. Or so I thought. Zach Ramarai murdered our mentor and fled to escape punishment for his crime. You said something to that effect seven years ago, didn't you? I remember it as if it were twary only yesterday. Yet that was not the way of it in the end. For while he vanished, the suspicions upon my own person never did. His partner Zach vanished. His partner Zach vanished to protect him. That's what those thieving magpies of a press said. I had no idea. Yes, the very same press comes to me now, feigning and dressed. They cover the greatest magic show in history, as it were, of Vandeville and destruction. And here must I stand, smiling at them all. What am I, if not a player in some fiendish farce? Might I suggest it's because you never made it clear what had happened? McNafee's death is still a mystery to this day. Which is why I came here to get the answer from here. Damn it. I knew I'd be seeing these sooner or later. The audience has no business stepping upon the stage. They must be content to sit and stare at the spotlight. That sounds an awful lot like something I heard seven years ago. Alright, let's do this. Ask what you will, you'll get nothing from me! I'm as much a part of this affair as you are now. I have to know what happened. For seven long years I have endured. Now finally the curtain lifts on my new golden age. All the miracles of our troop within my grasp. Sorry to do this, Valent. Um, right now I need answers. I think I'll start by dropping a bomb. That should shake things up. Valent, I wouldn't be so sure about those miracles. And as long as I have this. Um... All the transfer rights, right? Uh, where are they? That's Zack's confession. That's where it rides. Then what might that be? I see it bears the grammar I seal! Should have brought this to your attention sooner. But I didn't imagine you'd be planning your comeback quite so fast. What is this? Document showing the true recip recipient of the performance. Rides the Magnifique's miracles. What? Zach Grammarai! Who wrote this? What? He passed everything to his daughter? Trucy Enigma, actually. She's officially my daughter these days. Robustra, Zack! Zack is gone! Vanished into the void! This is the genuine article. Zack was alive when he wrote this. Both myself and the notary can testify to this. No! Why? Why does fate toy with me so? Why must my life be lived and thrown to the dead? You're not the only one with that problem. But he shot Magnafee! Yes, it was Zack! It was him! 
And then he left, and my career as a magician fell into darkness. Did you think there might be some way out of this? Say if you could prove Zach Ramorai's shot magnify. Was that what you testified? Yes, my way out. It should have been my way out. Well, it might not be too late, Mr. Valant. All you need is a way to prove your case. Who really killed Magnifi Grammarai? This says it's him? I just don't know to believe it or not. Zach Grammarai wrote one more thing before passing on. This, but this is a confession! In which he admits the killing of Magnifi Grammarai. See, all according to your plan. I am a magician by trade. Deception is my life's work. I fool the audience. Give them a fleeting dream. Yet it seems the tables have turned. Now I am the audience, believing in the deceptions I've wrought upon myself. Zack wrote this right in front of me. After I explained your situation to him. Oh my god. <laughs> Unlock successful. Magnifique Grammarai. You do know that this confession is nothing but lies! Yes, it's my opinion that Grammarai killed no one. Then you must be thinking the truth is a simple matter of elimination. Two received instructions to kill, but if one is innocent, then the other who remains is guilty. But would be that would be the logical conclusion, yes. So he vanished to protect me, his partner. Ha ha ha! A stirring tale, tis true. Did you shoot Magnifique Grammarai in the forehead? If I had and I told you, what would you do? Run to the police, by chance? Do as you will, there is nothing left for me now. It is true, after all. I have little talent. I needed my mentor, Magnifi's repertoire. It was as if a little demon grabbed a hold of me. Wait. So Valon Grimoire did kill the Great Magnifi. Seriously?! I hate this game so much. It's just throwing things at me and making me realize. Oh, okay, so the game's making it seem like not a big deal. Oh, oh, okay, I should just ignore it. I expected that to be the final conclusion. Like we'll actually work that out in the end. So sorry, Mr. Wright, but it was not I. Oh, I shot my mentor. What? But if it wasn't you, then who was it? There was another disciple, was there? Another disciple, such as I don't know. Knack and talent grammar, I maybe. <laughs> Your wild fancies couldn't be further from the truth. Only Zack and Valent received those threatening letters. But there was another. One more person who could have fired that pistol that night. I don't suppose you've figured it out by now. For one Zack or Valent who shot McAfee. Then it had to be the only other person at the scene, which means... Wait. Suicide? Yes, the great McAfee, Grammarai himself. What? I, I was thinking that. I, 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 I'm. By the way, I'm not lying here. I was thinking in my head, what if he did do it himself before Valant had arrived and after Zach had left? But they said there was no fingerprints on the glow on the gun, and it's not like after he shot himself, he can just take the gloves off. Did they find gloves on his body? I. Hang on. Do I have the crime photo? You can't see his hands. Fuck you. God damn it. <laughs> oh, God damn. I don't know. It's meant to be Grammar I committed suicide. You find it hard to believe. To be honest, I didn't even imagine it as a possibility. Yeah. When I arrived that night, the old man was still alive. He appeared to be asleep. I, I could not shoot him. But when I turned and made to leave the room, the old man called out to me. So you, so you spoke with Magnifi Grammarai? Yes, and this is why I knew what he had done. Magnifi transferred the rights to his repertoire to my partner, Zach Grammarai, not me! I see. And I guess I owe you an apology. I always thought you were the one who did it. You owe me no apology! Huh? My crime was in a way more serious than that of murder! What? Your crime? Is Valon Grammarai confessing something to me? What could be more serious than murder? Did he like... Was it like him holding a grudge against Zack or something? Or hoping he'd die? There are no secrets between partners, it was easy to find out. That was when I understood Mandavi's plan. He wanted to die by one of your hands. 
Little did I expect it had nothing to do anything to do with the rights. Little did I expect it had anything to do with the rights of the rupture. Oh, that was when I heard it. The little demon whispering inside my heart. To. Um. To blame Zackles? Oh, what? The demon. Let me confess, I had intended to shoot McNafee. And I planned on framing my partner for the crime. Just so he could get the repertoire, right? Well, what? That night, I prepared something before going to McNafee's hospital room. Which was? IV fluid, of course. I'd seen it on an earlier visit. If Zack did not shoot, I would be do the deed. Then I would use the IV liquid to place the murder on his hands. That was my plan. But you didn't shoot him. I could not. The demon in my heart fled when the moment came. But then McNafee called me back. I'm sorry, Valant. I am giving my magic to Zack, not you. You still lack the draw he has. Please help him, if you can. I left the room, and then I stopped. The shock of what I had just been told consumed me. Yep, there it is. That is when I heard that fateful gunshot. Active Ikram right killing himself. And the demon awoke anew within me. Zack killed him, he was the one. Frame him, and the magic will be yours. I altered the scene of his suicide. I took the pistol from his hand, wiped off the prince. Then I used the syringe to add the IV liquid he bought. I'd bought. So in the end, things happened pretty much as planned. And if he died, and you framed Zack for the murder. As planned, indeed. Of course, the outcome was somewhat different than I'd anticipated. Well, what do you think? You believe my story? Can it be believed truly? That was seven years ago. I don't know what to believe, but... Yes? I'm glad I heard from you, Mr. Valant. It is I who should be thanking you, Mr. Wright. Only when I had lost everything could I make my decision. You're going to turn yourself in? My partner may have vanished, but not so my guilt. And so my guilt stays, all else begins to leave me. My friends, my performance rights, my magic... I've had la 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 la. I understand. I thought my life was ruled by a dead man. But I find I was wrong. For Zach Grammarai was alive. Well, not anymore. And now it occurs to me, what if he was not the only one who survived? Oh my god. <laughs> Don't do it, game. You see, now that I think about it, I realize that I, no, we never saw proof of her demise. We never saw her body. Don't do it. 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 Don't be Lamar. Please. I'm begging you. Uh huh. The mind races and the mouth flaps on. My apologies. Forget this matter. I can only hope that the day will come when I again meet my partner, Zachary then I shall apologize for my terrible mistake. I am glad we hit this chance to talk. Thank you. Zach Grammarai, Shady Smith, whichever name you prefer, he is no longer with us. The truth revealed in that trial was only a silver. And the impenetrable darkness that remained has taken another life. I knew what I'd have to do to push back the darkness for good. And it would involve paying that man a visit. Christoph, right? Let's go. Sorry, sir. Prisoner Christoph Gavin is currently occupied. I see. Do you know when he'll be finished? Um, well... Could you go find out? Oh, certainly, sir. Please wait here for a moment. My apologies to the guard. There's something I need to see. Okay, I need to see this. There it is, the yellow envelope. And the sender is... True Misham, I was right. Yep. This is the, s the commemorative stamp, right? He seemed to be writing a letter, but he quickly sealed the envelope. It was a yellow envelope. I heard it was left at the crime scene. If this is the last letter that True Misham wrote, then there's something I need to do. The last thing I need to do, in fact. Here goes. 
Let's see if this anthropinite spray finds anything. There we go. So this was Drew Misham's messenger of death. It was this stamp, alright, and his last letter was sent to Christoph Gavin. The interview request came. Wait, what? Gotcha. Finally. Decisive evidence. I can't read it. Hang on. Check. There's no mistaking it. This commemorative stamp was the one on the desk in the Drew Studio, which makes this the letter he mailed just before he died. I can't read that. The interview request came, like you said it would, and they're looking into the case. I swear on my life I won't tell them about you, so please release the spell you've put on my daughter. I'll write later with a report. What spell? Better hold on to this one. What's this? A burglar in jail. Gavin. I didn't know you moonlighted and lost any right. Gavin, there's something I have to ask you. Can I steal your stuff? The answer is no. My apologies, but there's not much I care to discuss. Verma Sham hasn't received a verdict yet. You follow me, Gavin. There are no known survivors of antrocanine poisoning, but it never hurts to hope. Okay, I'll be leaving now then. Right, wait. Yeah, Gavin. Would you mind leaving that letter? It's private. Oh, sorry. Forgot I had it. Many thanks. There we go. Are you kidding me? That is a camera. We've now seen all the clues in this case. Clues that gathered over seven long years. Yeah, with that sticker thing, is that really a camera? Wow. Now it is time. Every story has an ending. We've come to this final chapter, the final trial. Find the truth, you're the only one who can. It's Kristoff, he's the killer. Nice. That was a very long trial. Two hours and ten minutes. Wow. Alright, on to the final trial. 